ನಮ ಸರ್ವೇಭ್ಯ ಗುರುರೇವ ಗತಿ ಗುರು ಮೇವ ಭಜೇ ಗುರು ನೈವ ಸಹಾಸ್ಮಿ ನಮೋ ಗುರವೇ ನ ಗುರೋ ಪರಮ ಶಿಶುರಸ್ಮಿ ಗುರೋ ಮತಿರಸ್ತಿ ಗುರೌ ಮಮ ಪಾಹಿ ಗುರೋ ಬ್ರವೀಮಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ವಾಚ ಧ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಹೃದ ಕುರ್ವೇ ಸೇವಾಂಚಕಾಯನ ವಂದೇ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಮಾತರ ಯೋ ನರ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ವ್ಯೋಮಿ ಹ್ಯಾಲಯ ರಮತೆ ಮುದ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಚೈವ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ವಿಂದತೆ ನಾತ್ರ ಸಂಶಯ ಸರ್ವೇಭ್ಯ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಅಹಾಟಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ದಿಸ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ ತತ್ವ ಬೋಧ a text ascribed to shankaracharya which is a condensed and structured version of the teachings contained in vedanta tatva bodha is a fundamental and preparatory text to be studied before any scriptural text like gita upanishads etc it is a great fortune that this course is being taught on vyoma sanskrita patashala without taking much time i would want to introduce you to the sutradhara the teacher of this course shrimati rama shivarama shrimati rama shivarama has been a student of swami paramarthananda since nearly 20 years over the years she has been learning the gita upanishads brahma sutra and various other advaitic works referred as prakarana granthas under swami ji in a consistent and systematic manner she has also been teaching courses on introductory vedanta bhagavad gita and upanishads since many years she is a living example of integrating vedanta with everyday life and how the principles of vedanta shape the personality of an individual and help him or her to effectively handle the pressures of contemporary corporate life rama ma'am has diverse and varied experience of over 25 years spanning strategy operations management and m&a she was the ceo of polaris consulting services limited a large global it services organization currently she is the president india operations of a new york based startup she is also the independent director of a public limited company and a member of the advisory board of vyoma linguistic labs foundation with this vast practical experience of handling um, individuals and institutions at top levels shrimati rama brings a unique perspective to her vedanta courses contrary to the popular perception that vedantic thinking is for retired individuals past their working age rama ma'am emphasizes that vedanta is invaluable for individuals at the prime of their career to develop proper attitude towards work and contribute their best to their chosen field she has conducted classes and many courses in management schools and addresses professionals in organizations on this subject she is very keen to create awareness around this vedantic way of life tatva bodha is one of the primary texts which provides an overview of all the basic concepts of advaita vedanta we are very happy that rama ma'am has taken up this text for teaching through vyoma sanskrit patshala quickly uh, i'm sure we all know how to join the classes so i just skip this for the time being uh, a few webinar guidelines uh, the webinar can be joined either through your pc or android or ios devices there is a raise hand button available on the bottom of your screen on zoom which you can use when you want to uh, communicate something with the teacher you have a q and a uh, box also available a button also available which through which you can ask your questions 
uh, and the mute and unmute button is also available. For best uh, outcomes, re uh, request everyone to use a headphone with mic so that you don't disturb the others and they're also very audible. Uh, and last, for any questions or doubts that may come up at a later time, you can always write to us on Sanskrit from home at vyomalabs.in or you can directly contact the teacher. Uh, importantly, please close all your other apps to, that use the internet in mobiles and browsers in a PC or a laptop that are open before logging on so that there is no lag when the class is going on. Without further ado, I warmly welcome Srimati Rama ma'am and all of you to this course on behalf of the Bioma family. Danyavadaha, thank you very much. So let me just share the screen first. Sada Shiva Samaram Pham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Pariyantam Vande Guru Param 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 Varishtam Brahmishtam Paramananda Rupinam Paramartha Nanda Yetim Sadgurum Pranatos Myaham. A warm welcome to all of you. And a little bit on some context and some hygiene aspects before we get into the uh, course proper. Now, Yoma, Yoma Samskrita Patashala tagline is focusing on Samskritam, Samskriti, right, and Samskara. Now, this course is definitely not for learning Sanskrit. Give me a second. I don't know how to push this to. So, this is not a course meant for learning Samskritam. A little bit of Samskritam will be covered because the text is obviously in some Sanskrit and therefore we will do it. But the primary focus of this text is and this class is Vedanta. So, I just wanted to remind people. In case, you know, they have some mis, you know, communication related to this and it is important to understand this. And also, very significant point is, this course is meant for people who believe in Sanatana Dharma, the existence of Ishwara and the Vedas. It is not definitely for atheists or non-believers just to acquire a general knowledge. Because a prerequisite to this course is Shraddha in Veda and Ishwara. So if there are such people, uh, please excuse. I just wanted to make sure that we understand. Because a prerequisite for this course is definitely Shraddha in Veda and Ishwara. And if this is your first course in Vedanta, you need to understand some things which are very unique. This is a Shastra which is very different from whatever you have been exposed to till now in life. So in general, what happens is from childhood, we've been trained to study science, maths. We're also asked to clear our doubts then and there so that you, know, you can keep progressing over and above that. Right? That's how we've been Thought. We've also been asked to raise questions and clarify immediately, then and there, right? Now, this works for all these sciences, but it doesn't work for Vedanta. The reason is, in Vedanta, you listen to something, right? Then you put that into practice, see what works for each person. You adjust your, you know, the way you eat, the way you behave, the way you assimilate a lot. And one by one, the doubts start getting cleared. However, I'm not saying that we can go to this extreme, you know, extent where we cannot ask questions at all because that was all in the Gurukula days. But definitely we have to attempt something which is reasonable for all of us. The first few classes, 
what happens is a lot of questions come up in the mind. My request is, please jot down or you can put it in the Q&A, the chat box, but I will not be looking at it during the class. And what we will do is at the end of the class, I'll give you time. If it is relevant for that, that particular class, I will definitely clarify. If it is not relevant for that class, I'm not going to drop them. I'm going to keep all of them together. And as the classes progress, we will make sure that we respond to all of them. Okay. It is very important to understand this. It is not that I am disrespectful. I just want to make sure that we understand that this Shastra is a very different Shastra. And by the end of the session, if we feel that we have more doubts, we can even have an exclusive Q&A session. Okay. So it is important to understand a little bit of this background. And a very important point, next point, the course is based on Advaita Vedanta, that is Adi Shankaracharya's Parampara. So therefore, then Pujya Swami Dayananda Saraswati and then Swami Paramartha Nandji, who has put together this course and I am just going to follow whatever I learned from Swamiji. So I am not competent to comment on Vishishta Dvaita, Dvaita, Buddhism, Jainism, etc. To the extent possible, where I have been taught that these are the departures, I will definitely clarify and pass it on to you. Okay. And the last but very important thing is, in this course, I will not be covering a few aspects which are very useful, right? In the introduction to Vedanta, I have covered these talks, the first um, five talks basically, which covers what is Purushartha, scriptures, Varna Dharma, Ashrama Dharma, Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga, briefly. Right? These eight topics have been covered in the first five sessions of introduction to Vedanta. It will be very, very useful if you can go through it, if you have already not gone through it. Right? So if you could do that, it will be easy for you as you progress. With this, let me just start with the subject proper. So, Tattva Bodha is a primer or preliminary text, a very, very fundamental text, which we study before studying our vast scriptural literature. Right? We have a very vast scriptural literature in Hinduism. This has been covered in one session in Introduction to Vedanta. And it is very, very vast that even if you merely study the titles, right, not the content, right, one lifetime will not be enough. Therefore, we choose some of the essential textbooks which will give us an idea about the scriptural literature. So, in the entire scriptural literature of Hinduism, there are six main topics discussed. So, what are the six topics in the entire literature, this is what is covered. And you will see that this has not been covered anywhere else in any of the science, maths or whatever history, geography that we have covered. So these six topics are as follows. The first one is the nature of the individual, the human being, right, the jiva, who experiences this vast universe, which in Sanskritam is called Jiva Swarupam. So the word jivaha means an individual living being, especially the individual human being. So jiva swarupa is one topic. Jiva refers to all living beings, but here specifically we are going to speak about human being. Prapancha swarupa, right? The second topic, which is nature of the world. So the universe is called jagat or prapancha. Therefore, prapancha swarupa. The nature of the world that we are confronting continuously. So, Jiva Swarupam, Prapancha Swarupam. Then the third topic is the creator of both the Jiva and the Prapancha, Ishwara Swarupam, nature of God. This is another area where if you have very less exposure, it is mind-boggling, right? The nature of Ishwara from what we have been thinking as a personal God and the many gods in Hinduism, the concepts get so much clearer as we go deeper and deeper. 
Then the fourth topic is samsara swarupam, the nature of human problem or bondage, which is almost universal. There are individual problems which vary from individual to individual, right? But they are universally experienced and that is called samsara. So continuous change happens at all levels, right? Our body changes, our children who are listening to us become adolescents and become adults, etc. Right? And then we grow, we become youth and then old age, right? Disease, death. Right? At the individual level, there is continuous change in the body, in the mind, in our relationship. And of course, at the world level, there is a lot of change. Right? There are favorable things as well as unfavorable things. And since unfavorable situations are bound to come, right? because that's what we see all around, there is a constant fear. Right? What will happen tomorrow? Right? Therefore, one of the fundamental expressions of samsara is bhayam or fear. The fear of what will vary and that fear is constant. What we fear about is different for different people. Right? So, there may be a loss of job fear. There may be another person who may be scared of a test result which is going to come up. It can be anything, but fear is a common aspect. Right? So, a loss of the favorable thing or something unfavorable happening constantly, that fear is there, right? So, there is sorrow caused by loss. There is a fear which is caused by the possibility of loss and sorrow caused by the actual loss. Both are there, right? So, the shoka and the bhayam, both are there. So, the entire first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita Arjuna Sorrow, Arjuna Vishada Yoga is the first chapter. So therefore, we can kind of roughly define samsara as bhayam and shoka, fear and grief. Since this is a universal problem, our scriptural literature discusses the topic called samsara and educates a person with regard to handling of fear and sorrow. How to handle fear? How to handle sorrow? So, the problem is called samsara and the solution is called moksha. Right? So, and the sixth and final topic is how to obtain this moksha or means to moksha. So, the problem is samsara, the solution is moksha and the final topic is how to attain this moksha. The method of solving the problem of samsara and attaining moksha. Right? So, Sadhana Swarupam. This, these six topics are discussed this way, right? And now, once you know that these are the topics that are discussed, then the natural question will be, why should I study these scriptures? Right? What am I going to get out of this? So, anything we require or to know the benefits, understand the benefits. Because many people think that scriptures are for what? For sannyasis who are sitting in some Himalayas. Further, Vedanta is definitely for people who are sitting in the Himalayas. And scriptures are not meant for busy people. I can tell you something. I have tried with so many people, you know, trying to tell them the importance of studying Vedanta or even attending introduction to Vedanta, right? So many. But most often, the response I get is, I am extremely busy, I don't have time, right? So, if they are going to tell this to people who actually are trying to, you know, balance both, you can imagine if a Swamiji goes and tells them, what is their response going to be? Because in this Kali Yuga, in this time, we are all running all the time with, if possible, two cell phones, right? One computer, laptop, iPad, everything together, right? So, the benefit of the study of scriptures, right? We should know. And Swamiji presents it very well. First one is Agnana Nivritti. Freedom from ignorance. What ignorance? Freedom from ignorance of the topics that we saw. Jiva Prapancha, Jiva Prapancha and Ishvara, right? Jiva Swarupa. Prapancha Swarupam and Ishwara Swarupam, right? So, what is the world? Who is God? 
and ignorance with regard to jiva the prapancha and god the ignorance will go away so agnana nivritti first benefit intellectually we will at least get some knowledge right and this agnana will go away the second benefit is samshaya nivritti doubts when we are ignorant we have lot of doubts right what happens when somebody passes away do we have a past birth do we have a future birth what is the purpose of creation is god really fair why do we see so much suffering around us why are poor people suffering so many questions we have right so is there a god at all because science scientists have not proved the existence of god right and we are now very rational people so we always have this doubt right so how many gods are there why why so many forms are there so all these doubts right clearance that happens and that is samshaya nivritti then the third one is viparyaya nivritti which is freedom from misconception many misconceptions are there with regard to hinduism right so many misconceptions almost all the people who come to study the scriptures will generally say oh my god i should have started this long back i would have at least understood hinduism better i could have taught my children better so many things because we don't have a clear understanding only when there is a systematic study these doubts will get cleared in a nice and clean manner right a casual study of one book and then another book somewhere else it's only going to cause confusion it's exactly like you know um, a truck kind of bringing lot of bricks and dumping and going and you you try to make something out of it it is only chaotic whereas when it is neatly arranged as per a drawing and then fixed one over the other etc then a beautiful house emerges from that right so similarly if you just go on reading uh, 100 pages of one book you know geeta by this saint then uh, katopanishad by another saint um, another a learned modern age writer he writes the third book so i read that it's not going to give us a full complete picture of our scripture so this freedom from misconception right happens when you go through a consistent and systematic study of the scriptures right instead of just dumping bricks as i said neatly arranging them right because in one place it will say um, you know do lot of rituals in another place it will say don't do rituals right so the person without a guru and a proper and structured teaching will be lost right for instance kaivalya upanishad says na karmana na prajaya dhanena and it says oh a sanyasi is great because he doesn't have any karma no praja no dhanam etc then after that you read another pick up shiksha valya of taitreya upanishad same upanishad no? it's not even karma kanda it is part of the upanishad it says prajaja swadhyaya pravachane cha prajanascha swadhyaya pravachane cha what does it say it says get married one should get married get children they are important so what happens the same scriptures is talking about both so if you don't understand the perspective and if you don't have a guru right and the shastra to guide you in a systematic way then you get lost right so this is the third advantage that is freedom from misconceptions when you go through it in a very structured manner and we have to remember this we have spent a lot of time in school over so many years learning maths things etc so we need to be patient with respect to scriptures i'm sure we'll get there and we will have a good command over the subject but it is important for us to go through this in a systematic manner right so now we generally use these you know the the sessions that we have we call them classes because we need the same seriousness as we would approach a class in our typical schools or colleges right for instance now every class that we will be doing will build upon the previous class so if you kind of don't revise it's not very difficult but if you don't revise then you lose the thread it is very important to understand that and in tattva bodha several technical words will be introduced 
This is very important. The word, all these words are important because this is a primary fundamental text. Over time, we have to register these words so that when we study Upanishads, etc., it will be lot easier. Gita, even Bhagavad Gita, when you study, unless you have Tattva Bodha background, half the things will not make sense. In uh, uh, which I put it in the trailer, actually, it will not make sense. So you have to go through this and make a little effort to remember the important terminologies, right? And then the fourth one, the scriptural knowledge will give us a thorough understanding of myself, the world and God, and it will bring about a total change in our perspective of the world. The way we get to look at world, the way we look at the experiences that we get continuously, right? our perspectives, our attitudes, right? And as even the perspective and attitude changes, our response to situations and people around us start changing, right? We get more and more informed and refined. And because of the change in perspective, attitude and response, we will find reactions to the painful situations of life, right? those reactions will start coming down or will become milder. It will not go away, but it will definitely come down. So the impact of painful physical situations or any kind of situation will come down, right? And once we remember the teaching, we will be able to collect ourselves quickly and we are able to bounce back from situations, right? And then we say, oh, okay, so what? And move on. So that's knowledge of power. The, the knowledge is power and it gives emotional immunity to difficult situations in life. So this emotional immunity is like a vaccine, basically, right? It's a very powerful injection in the form of emotional immunity to samsara, right? So bhayam comes down. And we can actually see for ourselves, these are all not promises which are going to come after death. That's a very important difference between Advaita Vedanta and others. In some other philosophies, it is said, oh, after death, you will go to Kailasha, you will go to Vaikunta, you will go here, there, then you will gain, you know, uh, immortality, etc. Right? But here, it doesn't say that. It says, during this journey, you will be able to reap the benefits of this study when you assimilate the teaching. Right? So you don't even have to go and verify with anybody. During your life, you can feel the difference, right? So, it's a very, very important, no posthumous benefits, right? So, it promises Jeevan Mukti, liberated while living, right? So, the mind starts enjoying equanimity. So, as Bhagavan Krishna says in the Gita, right, uh, 238, Samadukhe, Same, Sukhadukhe, Same Kritva, Labha, Labha, Jaya, Jayao. Tato yudhaya yudhyasva naivam papam vapsyasi. Sukha dukhe same kritva. The person is equanimous with respect to happy as well as unfavorable situations. Right? So emotional balance is the benefit. And then the fifth and final benefit is dakshata prapti, attainment of efficiency. The best benefit that you reap when you are in active working life, whether you're at home, bringing up children, or whether it's your career, any of these, right? This is the best benefit because it is a consequential benefit because when the mind is generally calm and relaxed, naturally our performance in any field will be better because a calm mind can use all the resources available, right? So EQ is very important and that is what Gets, that's a direct benefit finally from this, right? So, for instance, uh, you go to an examination hall, you forget at the last minute everything, right? Suddenly it blanks out. Those kind of things don't happen because your mind is calm and in a calm mind, we are able to think calmly and reflect much better. So, the depth of understanding, the absorbing capacity, the assimilation, the recall, all of this starts improving and you will actually see that you are able to stay calm in even difficult situations, right? That is where it really benefits when you are in active working life, right? So Lord Krishna calls this dakshata, right? So 
in the 12th chapter he talks about it so dakshata prapti aghata nivritti right so there are two sides of the same coin freedom from adverse impact and attainment of efficiency thereafter right so with this we will enter the text proper swarna bagini you can chant after me okay guruji Om Sahana Vavatu. Om Sahana Vavatu. Sahana Bhunaktu. Sahana Bhunaktu. Sahaviryan Karavavahai. Sahaviryan Karavavahai. Tejasvi Navadhi Tamas. तेजस्वी ओम शांति 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 ओम शांति 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 so we'll be chanting this uh, famous prayer mantra called shanti pataha which is not part of the text but it is a well known uh, prayer so it's a vedic prayer and we'll quickly go through the meaning of it also it is a very very well known prayer and in this prayer a vedic student seeks the grace of the lord for the successful completion of our project the study therefore he says om so the word om is one of the names of the god god has several names but one name is om and the meaning of the word om is the protector of the devotee avati rakshati iti om so the word om is derived from the sanskrit root av rakshane to protect and avati iti om is the lord the protector of these devotees that lord now saha avatu right so in this book that uh, there is a book which is uh, uploaded on the site you can use that for word to word meaning but anyway i'm going to be covering the verse meaning and any important grammatical aspect i will cover then and there okay so now saha avatu you have to split it as now saha and avatu okay so na vavatu must be split as now avatu may the lord protect both of us and now means both of us avam both of us meaning which both the guru and the shishya even though shishyas are many the group of shishyas are referred as one unit so the shishya group and the guru okay so simultaneously may the lord protect what kind of protection by making the communication successful for communicating the message of the scriptures the guru must be able to communicate properly and the shishya must be able to receive properly so we've got a transmission and a reception right so in either way anywhere if you have a problem there can be a communication problem so guru's transmission and shishya's reception must be successful because guru is converting the thought into words and shishya must convert the words back into thoughts right so both the conversions the word thought to word conversion and word thought reverse conversion must be successful so that the thought of the guru and the knowledge of the shishya will confirm so may lord protect us both by making the communication successful okay then sahana bhunaktu may the lord protect us again why second time protection right so we are studying the scriptures not for academic purposes right so many people think that you know if you have gita is done upanishad is done no it is not just academic interest we have to take them and put it into practice also right so transformation of the personality is very very important right so positive transformation must happen in fact our family members must be able to tell that oh 
this person's outlook to life has changed right so that is when the the subject or the scriptures has had its effect right so there must be a positive transformation which must benefit our family members profession neighbors our team members etc so this transformation is important therefore oh lord may i be able to assimilate the teaching because the assimilated teaching alone transforms right so bhunaktu is for that as a like basically eat and food is not going to give you any good health it is only the digested food which will help right so i should be able to receive the message and integrate with my entire personality it should per it should percolate into each and every cell and i should become a transformed person so oh lord may you bless me for this also so blessing for information blessing for transformation both sahanau bhunaktu but the literal meaning is the same may the lord protect may the lord protect again then sahaviryam karavavahai here again note the word karavavahai right lot so here the student says that god's grace alone is not enough god's grace will give the opportunity and the circumstances for the study but in addition to the god's grace i have to put forth my own personal efforts i have to attend the class regularly i have to put forth my effort to understand that i have to do hard work right i have to receive i have to assimilate right and here the passing of examination is transformation of the personality itself right so very important aspect therefore let us put forth our own effort so prayatna plus ishwara prasada is equal to the vijay basically you need both god's grace as well as the effort and of course our free will the determination to do something right then next line is tejasvi na tejasvi navadhi tamastu here also the words must be split as now adhitam right so our own learning our understanding right the adhitam means the learning that we have done tejasvi astu let it remain in my mind it should not go out right just go through the years and pass out right it should not happen do not go a waste so tejasvi means let it remain bright in my mind let it not fade away let it remain green in my memory right so very important the knowledge should remain fresh and finally and most importantly ma vidvishavahai okay so technically if you see the word it should be vidveshavahai right so here it is a vedic usage ma vidvishavahai right and what does it mean let our relationship be healthy without dvesha that's what it means right so let our relationship be healthy let there be no strain in our relationship which relationship guru shishya sambandha literally dvesha means hatred and those days guru and shishya used to live in the gurukula right resident students then the guru might give more work to one student may give different kind of work to another student etc right so it is very important that there should be no misunderstanding okay right? so the guru shishya sambandha must be devoid of any dvesha or misunderstanding right and there should be no unnecessary motives ascribed etc shraddha and bhakti are very very important in the guru right so therefore ma vidvishavahe let our relationship culminate in freedom the ultimate freedom is what that the guru expects that the shishya will learn everything and he will not depend on the guru for his emotional comfort he will be on his own independent and that is why they used to give sanyasa and after sanyasa the shishya went away and the guru went his way therefore ma vid vishavahai and om shanti 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 hi tri shanti why is that tri very important it is not without reason that there are three right traditionally they talk about three sources of obstacles the first obstacle is i should be able to sit i shouldn't have knee problem leg problem hand problem joint problem etc right so that is 
ఆధ్యాత్మిక ప్రతిబంధ సో ఫ్రీడమ్ ఫ్రమ్ ఆబ్స్టకల్స్ పర్టైనింగ్ టు మై ఓన్ సెల్ఫ్ రైట్ మై బాడీ రిలేటెడ్ మైండ్ రిలేటెడ్ దెన్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఆబ్స్టకల్స్ ఫ్రమ్ నేబర్స్ అదర్ లివింగ్ బీయింగ్స్ రైట్ అనిమల్స్ ప్లాంట్స్ ఎక్సెట్రా సో దట్ ఈస్ ఆది భౌతిక ప్రతిబంధ భూత మీన్స్ ప్రాణిన then there should not be any disturbance from any natural forces like flood drought earthquake etc right fire etc so that is adi daivika right natural forces are called devata surya devata prithvi devata bhu devata and obstacles from them are called adi daivika pratibandha so may those obstacles also not be there at least during the time that we study that is why shanti is repeated thrice for these three different obstacles right very important point here so finally the meaning is may he protect us both together by giving knowledge may he protect us both together by giving the fruit of knowledge and may we both put forth sufficient effort and may our learning be effective let us not distance each other and let there be shanti peace peace and peace okay so every day when we start the class we will start with sahana vavatu now coming to the textbook proper let me just see if there is anything are you able to see me because uh, some people have i just noticed it now maybe it's it is okay okay bharatwaj you can stop me if you can't see me okay. yeah mr bharatwaj so, okay so now we are going to get into the textbook proper this textbook is titled tatva bodha <clears throat> it is authored by shankaracharya and we are not sure whether the author is adi shankaracharya the originator of the tradition or one of the shankaracharyas occupying the matha established by adi shankara we don't know this okay so this book being useful we are not analyzing which shankara it was so we just say the author is shankaracharya in general and the whole textbook is in prose form right except the first and the last part where there are verses but everything else is only in prose form the first part is a prayer verse which is in verse form written by shankaracharya himself the last is also a verse right so we will enter into the prayer verse of tatva bodha suvarna bagini you can repeat after me ేంద్రయోగీంద్రాగీంద్రాగ్ఞానప్రదంగురుక్షూణాయ ఇంటెన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన్షన
when there is no interaction there is no life as in deep sleep i don't interact with the world there is no life whereas when i wake up i have i come up to the consequences of pleasure pain etc so two important components are jiva and prapancha then our scripture introduces a third important component also and that is god who is the creator of this entire universe as well as the individual so the creator is called god or ishvara thus the universe consists of basically the entire universe the triangle of the individual world and god jeeva prapancha ishvara triangle so according to our scriptures the ultimate truth behind all these three right the individual the world and god the truth is one and the same thus the ultimate truth behind this triangle is known by three different names right so the ultimate truth behind this triangle right only you have different names one is tattvam as in tattva bodha so the word tattvam means one truth behind all these three so the second word we will repeatedly be using is brahman right so tattvam is same as brahman the third word that we will be using repeatedly is atma so tattvam brahma and atma are the names of the ultimate truth behind the individual world and god so the entire vedanta deals with the bodaha bodaha means what the knowledge of tattvam therefore it is called tattva bodaha or it can be known actually as brahma bodaha or atma bodaha atma bodaha is in fact another text right so the knowledge of the ultimate truth is the aim of this text therefore he says tattva bodho bhi diyate it is written by me he says right for what benefits right obviously we are all spending time on a sunday evening without going to a movie or watching a movie on netflix or you know going for some drama concert etc or maybe we are missing a wonderful match why do we study tattva bodha he says mumukshu nam hitarthaya mumukshu means moktum ichchu right it's a sananta prayoga seeker of moksha right so mumukshu nam hitarthaya the benefit of spiritual seekers for the benefit of spiritual seekers i am writing this text tattva bodha after duly offering namaskara to my guru because in our tradition every spiritual teacher offers namaskara to the guru parampara his guru and the parampara therefore he says gnana pradam gurum natva natva means after offering my namaskara to my guru so here shankaracharya's guru is whom here vasudevendra yogindram now vasudeva can be understood as lord krishna the ultimate guru the ishvara guru whom we see in gita dhyana shlokas vasudeva sutam devam kamsa chanu ramardana right so we see that or it can it can refer basically to lord krishna the ishvara guru or it may be the name of that particular shankaracharya guru also therefore vasudevendra yogindram is the name of the guru yogindram means the great yogi yogi means spiritually wise person jnani ityartha so the great jnani who is known as vasudevendra yogindram who happens to be my guru who is my guru i am offering namaskara and writing the following text name tattva bodha hitarthaya means for the benefit of so this is guru namaskara seeking the grace of the guru right and next he introduces the whole teaching in one beautiful sentence just in one sentence bagini you can repeat after me साधन चतुष्टय संपन्न साधन चतुष्टय संपन्न अधिकारिना मोक्ष साधन भूतम अधिकारिना मोक्ष साधन भूतम तत्व विवेक प्रकारम वक्ष्यामह तत्व विवेक प्रकारम वक्ष्यामह so this initial introductory sentence 
serves as a preface to the book Tattva Bodha, right? So, in any book, you see a foreword or a preface, right? So, traditionally, in our Sampradaya, four factors used to be presented and it, it is presented almost in all the books. I haven't seen a book which doesn't have this. So, it is referred to as Anubandha Chatushtayam. Four factors are presented. I am just going to introduce and then stop because I want to take questions. So, Adhikari, the candidate is presented. Prayojanam, the benefit I will get out of the study. Vishayaha, the subject matter. And Sambandaha, the connection between the candidate and the subject matter. Now, all of these has been presented in that one sentence, which we will definitely take it up in the, in the next class. Today, I'm going to stop here because I want to see if you have questions because I see a lot of hands raised and some questions also. So, we will open it up. Let me do one thing. I will complete the Purnamada and then open. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Okay. Uh, Bharadwaj, how would you like to go about this? Should we take the Q&A first? Uh, yes, ma'am. We can finish the Q&A first and then we can go for live uh, interaction. Okay. Um, many people give stress when saying the first karavava hai, hai along with adding stress. Yes. Um, the chanting will require that stress and uh, uh, today we didn't do it that way. From next class anyway, when we chant, it will be high. There will be stress there. So you're right. Rajeshwari. How do I do the side-by-side -side mode with both the video and slides? Uh, Bharatwaj, you may have to answer this. Currently, I'm swapping back and forth. Bharadwaj? There is a, a view option on the top of the screen uh, where you can see it as a side-by-side -side speaker or a side-by-side -side gallery. So if you uh, look at that, you will be able to uh, see it. But currently for everybody, it is as follow the host view. So whatever ma'am is presenting is only what you will be seeing along with her uh, camera. And anyway, the recording should also be available. We can see how it looks there. Okay. Then, uh, do we have a book to refer? Uh, what is it? This book is what we have uh, actually scanned and put it up on the uh, site. So, you should be able to get it from the course page once. Anyway, the video also will be uploaded uh, maybe tomorrow. So, you can uh, download the book. Has the book been put up, uh, Bharadwaj? Would you know yes, ma'am. It it has been put up. Okay. And how do I access the slides presented? Yes, after each class, the slide, the PDFs of the slide would be uploaded. So by tomorrow, you will be able to access it. So the question was on book. If you exit full screen, you will be able to see both. Oh, somebody is telling. Okay. Okay. Um, on the Shanti Mantra, tomorrow I will, uh, the next class I will chant fully, then you will be able to get it. Can you enable the mute button? I don't see it. I think by default you are all on mute. So where can we find the introductory videos playlist? Yes, uh, I have put the link in the PDF. So you should be able to see the introduction to Vedanta playlist there. 
Otherwise, also, if you type introduction to Vedanta, Vyoma, and then, you know, um, playlist, you should be able to locate it. What is the meaning of Tattva? Here, in this context, as I explained, it is just for Atma or Brahman. You take it at that now, because that's the meaning that we are using here for Tattva Bodha. Okay. Then why is Tattva Bodha known as an introductory text? Um, as we go through the text, you will be able to understand that uh, it, it doesn't get into the details of how uh, one has to proceed on the spiritual journey, etc. Like Gita or Upanishads, it won't do that. It kind of explains what your body is, what is your what is Ishwara Swarupam, all of that. It's all, all what's. Like you can say, it's like anatomy and physiology, very crude way of saying, but it's like anatomy and physiology. But it doesn't say, um, how can you uh, improve your uh, physique or you know, mental state? All those are not covered here. So that's the difference. It's a fundamental text. And once you know the terms that are used here, then when you go through Gita, you are able to relate better. That is why it's called a fundamental. Can new students still join the course? Definitely. Uh, they can join as long as they join from the next week because after that it will go very fast. And also, please ask them to see the first five uh, classes of introduction to Vedanta because it will be very useful for you. In the intro, it was said the text is a Prakarana Grantha. What is a Prakarana Grantha? Again, I covered this in the session on scriptures and introduction to Vedanta. Uh, any Grantha which is based on uh, the Upanishads, right, which are the Vedanta, Bhaga, the Shastras, all of those are referred in general as Prakarana Grantha. And any commentary on Upanishad is generally referred to as Upanishad Bhashyams or Vartikams, etc. All other texts which are based on the scriptures, but are not the scriptures, uh, not the uh, core Shastra like Upanishads, are referred to as Prakarana Grantha. What are the seventh and eighth after Moksha Sadhana? I didn't get this at all. There is nothing other than Moksha Sadhana. Can you give us the list of books to start with, please? Only this, this book is anyway scanned and put up on the site so you can take a look at it. I saw um, reference to Chatushtayam here. Can you list out the Sadhana Chatushtayam? Um, I can, but uh, it doesn't make sense at this stage. Viveka, Vairagya, Shamadi, Shadka, Sampati, Mumukshutvam. It won't make sense until we get into the next two sessions. Do we have class every day? No, only on uh, uh, Sundays. Can you please explain the three sources for the significance of the three Shantis? Uh, sources means you want references or um, I, I didn't understand. So I told you what each Shanti was for each of these three things. So if, if you're looking for the reference or the text, I'll have to check and let you know. Okay, now let me just go to the people who have raised their hands. Um, Bharadwaj, I, do, I don't know how to... Ah, here, there are three people, right, who have raised their hands. Yes, uh, Ram Sheshan, sir, you can talk. At that point, uh, the, the screen went blank and I was not clear as to what is being shown. And immediately after that, the uh, screen became all right. Okay. So I, I was able to follow. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Jyoti? Yeah. Uh, good evening, madam. Mm -hmm. And good evening to uh, Bharadwaj also. Uh, I was interested in two things. Now, the book which is loaded up, the Tattva Bodha book, do I understand that it is the author is Shankaracharya? Yes. We don't okay. know which Shankaracharya. Okay. Okay. And the second is, 
apart from guru reva gatin that apart from that sloka there were couple of other slokas which was recited by uh, bharadwaj ji and then yourself also there were two three would that be kindly uploaded so that i can write it down and recite it yes yes the whole all the slides will be uploaded okay including the initial introduction slokas I, yes i will ask bharadwaj to do it Yeah, yeah, regarding the namaskar to Sanskritam and all, because that was beautiful, and I did not know about it. I knew only a couple of them, and regarding your explanation of Shanti Mantra, also I knew about Adi Daivi, Adi Bhavte, and Adhyatmik. But that it is referred to this particular sloka. I used to recite it, but without knowing the meaning. So thanks to you, that so you any, know. Anywhere that we have the three Shantis, it is for this reason. Oh okay okay thank you madam very much i feel blessed learning from you shri ram ji oh no my dad i figured that i can ask the question in the chat box i asked oh, it there okay okay you veda namaskara ma'am first of all thank you for this class uh my question is uh, regarding about putting the thoughts into actions like we are learning from you and how do we go about uh, translating the whatever knowledge we're taking in into actionable uh, points in our day to day life i know this is the first class but then could you just give us a a starting point yeah so first of all uh... tatva bodha is going to talk about so many aspects that are required but it is not going to tell you how to achieve them as i said it is only bhagavad gita which will tell you how to actually go on those journey so once you go through bhagavad gita upanishads in a systematic manner all of this is covered for instance um mind control what kind of dhyana to do right and how do you expand your mind uh, go, how do you relax all of this gets covered as you go through the bhagavad gita uh, chapters and in case you have not done bhagavad gita i have actually covered in 145 hours in yoma itself so if you want you can start that after you you know progress through tatva bodha for some time because the those are the texts that will actually cover so this is more a it's kind of a glossary or a foundational text which will tell you all these are possible for instance shamadi shatka sampatti ki we'll be seeing in the next uh, class that is it talks about mind control sense control etc it doesn't tell you how to do it right but as we go through bhagavad gita we will say upavasa is one way mauna vrat is another way right so those kind of things will get discussed as we go through the rest of the text thank you ma'am thank you so much venkat uh, namaskaram ma'am i hope i'm audible yes yes uh, namaskaram again uh, in the first shanti mantra uh, we had the three shanti 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 uh, mm-hmm. i think that was in plain this uh, in veras and purnamada at the end of the shanti there is anudatam or the other way around Correct. so could you please tell me why one is different from the other please because uh, um, one of, see the different vedas have different ways of chanting and uh, this one purnamada comes with uh, a particular kind of uh, intonation and you have to follow that so strictly i actually didn't want to get into the details for this session strictly if you see you have to chant right and in chanting there will be a difference between the sahana bhavatu and that that is because that is how the uh, the chants have been done in the respective uh, vedas or in the shakas so we cannot change that that uh, up and down right in the tone so maybe if you are interested i should actually um, put swami ji's you know chant and show you the difference between the two uh, different chants right of shanti shanti we will do that but for this uh, this group i think we should not get too bothered about that we'll just go ahead and chant to the best possible you know extend that we can 
thank you ma'am namaskar if you are, if you are chanting uh, and uh, specifically learning from someone then they will be very particular about how you chant the shant yes ma'am i have been learning for about 20 years now thank you namaskara very nice so in, in fact you should be chanting both and showing <laughs> the difference so i mean let's swami ji chant thank you namaskar <laughs> okay anybody else i think that's all we had all the yeah good so thank you very much so we will follow this format even from the next class so i'll try and complete 10 minutes earlier or 5 minutes earlier depending on the number of questions and then we can take questions